Hello everyone and we are super excited today because we are finally going to plant up our first containers for the growing season. Yep, so last year we had this awesome project going on with the community here where we did some containers and everybody absolutely loved it. We did three plant containers uh, and we, we when we handed those out and we put those into the community and did the video like everybody loved it and we absolutely loved doing it too so it was pretty exciting trying to get to know you know what plants are going to work with what and then putting some containers together yeah. was was an integral part of what we were doing so yeah. it was pretty awesome it was so much fun for the families and the kiddos you know their own kids um but at the same time it was so much fun for us because we work with a small garden so being able to put other containers together that we can other plants you know using other plants that we yeah. are not going to be able to use in our garden yeah so last year we focused on only three plants per container. This year we're gonna just, we're not really just gonna do whatever, but we're gonna add a couple more plants here or there. Some will be three plants, some will be a little bit more, um, but yeah. just to get a bit of variety and it, it helps us understand plants a little bit better. Now that we understand a whole bunch of different plants, we can put these combinations together. They absolutely look amazing. Yes, so one of the first containers that we're going to do I, I just got so so inspired with with happy. I'm gonna call it happy. Um, it, it's um, it was it's a family. They came and dropped off the container. Yep. And um, it came with a little note. And um, their, first of all, their daughter was very excited, very happy, and and it came with a little note that said purple and butterflies. Yeah. She likes purple and butterflies. I was like, okay, pollinator garden. You know, not just butterflies. Let's go ahead and and. Of course, I have purple, and I'm going to show you right now one of the most beautiful purples that, that we're going to use in here. But oh, I yeah. said, let's go ahead and just throw in a bunch of color, a bunch of happy, just so they can see more of a full garden because it's just one container. So yeah. I am so happy that they brought us this big container because yeah. we're able to go ahead and put, you know, usually we do two containers per, yeah. per home. Yeah. But I'm so happy that it's, it's one big container because now we can we can play around with it yeah, so definitely. much. So. Let's go ahead and start. Um, I think we're going to do two. Yes. Two we're going to do two, uh, two containers in this video. The first one's going to be the pollinator container. And then we'll talk about the next one after we get this one done. So as Ambrose is getting the soil ready, the potting soil ready, I'm going to go ahead and let you know about the holes in the pot. Make sure that your container, your pot has holes in, in there so it can drain well the water. Um, sometimes they don't come with holes, so go ahead and make the holes yourself. You can use, we, we use a drill, so it's easier for us. And then, of course, potting soil. Make sure that you have a very good quality potting soil. You don't want to use any, any other regular soil that's for the garden. You want to use potting soil. Um, we, use, we love to use the Spoma Organic Soil. Um, it, it's a very, very good quality soil. It, it, it keeps, it holds enough moisture, but it doesn't have the soil. It doesn't leave it um, um, soggy. So the plants are very, very happy in the container. Okay, so now we have to feed the plants. So I'm gonna go ahead and have Ambrose show you what we do use. <clears throat> so for our containers um, with annuals, especially the ones we're using with pre-winters, is we use this premium continuous release plant food. Now this will feed your plants for up to six months. What this does is they come in little pellets here that break down with heat and humidity. And it, it has directions back here. It tells you how much to put in there. This is a almost a 20 inch container. So I'm gonna go ahead and double the amount that it would take for like a 12 to 14 inch container. So I'm gonna do eight total scoops in here. It normally says four for like an 18 inch container. I'm gonna go ahead and do eight in here. I'm gonna mix this up. And again, like I said, this is gonna break down in a period of over six months to feed those roots and feed the plants throughout the year. So today's container is going to be for full sun. So all the plants are for full sun and they're all annuals and are zone 7B. Um, so we will go ahead and, and put down below on the screen information over every plant. That way you know if it's an annual or not for your area. I'm gonna go ahead and plant this one. Okay, so this one is incredible yellow and it seems to just make it back every single year for us. Every this is, single right, year. Yeah, it, we love it so much because it's such a ch cheery flower. It just has that bright yellow. Um, this is a sunflower and it's more on the compact side and it just sp uh, um, spreads out, puts out a lot of stems where it gets every stem flowers for you. Yeah. So that is just so pretty and happy. And I was thinking to myself, you know, such a cheery container and, and happy. 
why not? Um, it also, you know, attracts the bees a lot. Yep. So you're going to be, you, you know, able to see those beautiful bees come around, the pollinators. And that's why I said, why not add some yellow to this container? I think it will just bring yeah, it all it, together. It, it's going to be great. So like we said, the goal for this one was a pollinator um, container. And this sunflower here is definitely going to cover us on the bees because... Every time we have this planted anywhere, there's just bees all over the place. It's already spreading so many, yep. so that's what I love about it. Okay, so now what I love this one so much. So this one is called Vermillionaire, or it's um, a um, firecracker it, it's plant. A, it's named a firecracker plant I'll as well. It to it's you. a capella. Um, beautiful, beautiful plant. And this right here, these beautiful orange red flowers that you see attract the hummingbirds. So how wonderful is that to have hummingbirds coming around? We actually saw. What is it? Second time around a hummingbird coming around here already. Yep. So yeah, we want to go ahead and have them there. You know, the, um, the the family too. You know that we're doing this container for. Enjoy that. Get to see some hummingbirds come around. Yeah, that's going to be pretty awesome. Um, these trumpet flowers are here. Definitely attract the hummingbirds. So we got bees. We got hummingbirds. What's next? So now we have a verbena, which is called Superbena Red. And Amber's is super happy for this one right here. I am. I'm very excited about this red. And and do you know why? Why? because we haven't had a <laughs> solid red in the garden for some time now. I already knew that. He, he loves red verbena, and I told him that I, it, it has sentimental value for me, you know. I bet um, I was a little tired of seeing it because my mother, in, in her garden, she had it all the time. It was an annual in um, back home in Texas, in the south, San Antonio. So for her, you know, that verbena popped up every single every single growing season, and she just loved having yeah. it. So but, I love it again. I, I definitely, just definitely. It's so, so, so here, here's beautiful. the here's the real deal with the red is is we have a red house, and normally a lot of people say red does not go on red. It does. You can use it with red, but we wanted to it kind of stray beautiful. away from it because the pinks we're finding that the pinks go absolutely beautiful with this house, and so being able to use red in another container for someone else is going to be awesome to be able to go and see that once we do any updates yeah. on it. The good thing about verbena is that verbena attracts. Um, I think it attracts everything. It attracts from uh, it attracts from the. Um, yes. I've seen the hummingbirds actually come around to yep. it. Um, what are the other ones? Hummingbird. You got hummingbird mo moths, moths as well. The bees. Um, the bees, of course. Uh, but the but the number one thing that this is that's going to attract this is the uh, the butterflies. I'll go ahead and do and this. And that's one. what's going to be pretty awesome. Is so we got our we got our butterflies, we got our hummingbirds, we got our bees. Um, so it, it's already turned out to be a great pollinator container there. Okay, so now we got our blue. Um, or purple that, you know, yes. they ask for in this container. It's it's called whirlwind blue, but I see it more as, as a deep purple. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as I'm pulling this out right here, I'm gonna make sure that the roots... Now, yep. sometimes, you know, we're asked that how come we don't um, mess with the roots? Because a lot of times you don't, you really don't need to. They're not that bad, but this one is. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to mess with these right now. I'm going to tickle those roots a little bit. But this right here is whirlwind blue. We yeah. did a couple of years back. Pink. We did whirlwind pink, and I'm going to tell Loved you something it. about this plant. So one of the reasons, uh, you know, Angie said that that the note said purple, and we want to give a purple. But we don't want to overwhelm it with purple, and the reason for that is we wanted to put one good purple plant that's actually going to show out and give that purple that they would be expecting. And so with whirlwind pink, when we grew that one, it completely overtook a good portion of the of the container. So this whirlwind blue is going to do similarly the same thing. So we expect it to fill out nice and give that bright shot of purple that they're that they're wanting in the in the garden there and of course it attracts a lot of the pollinators too the bees love it and there yes. is something that we really love about it so for a anyone that that likes to um i don't know maybe put it in an area where you don't want it to get messy at all with um the flowers because yeah. all of these flowers deadhead on their own so when you see when these just seem to disappear you don't even see them yeah. on the on the ground at all i don't know where they go but they just they magically disappear when they deadhead on their own yeah I, we don't get to see them at all, so. Yeah, or. Okay, so, of course, I wanted to add a little bit of green foliage on yep. there, something that's like lime bright. This one's called Sweet Caroline Light Green. Yep. It's a potato vine, an ornamental potato vine. And I always love to add at least something that's bright. Yes, of, yes. Uh, a, um, I don't know, some, some foliage type yeah, to it. so we actually. Ooh, these, these are. Oh, yeah, that one on. too. So we actually used a potato vine last year called Medusa. I don't want to. 
hurt Medusa them either. Medusa is a more compact potato vine, but because we have a lot of these mounding plants, we didn't want to put a mounding potato vine. We wanted something that's going to trail a little bit more as well. And so that's why Angie went with this one here, because it's going to give almost a medium trail, not completely all the way to the bottom, but it's going to be a nice spiller in this container, so to say. Okay, so we had to go ahead and pause a little bit. I went to the front of the container to look at it, and the plants were a little bit low, so we had to go ahead and push them back up, lift them up a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and pop another one on this side of yep. the red, um, Superbina um, red. Yeah, so we had two Superbina reds flanking the sides of this container. I think it's going to look beautiful with that, that blue pretty. right in the center. And then a little bit of spill of the, uh, the potato wine there, so... I'm already I lo loving it. I do love the red of the verbena. It is pretty. It was time to use that red. Yeah, so we actually, when we had some sewing here, we stacked the uh, the container here just to see, just to get an idea of what we're looking at every time before we actually plant these up. And I was already loving it just with the container sitting here in the soil. So um, let's go ahead and fill, up, fill it up with soil. Yep. And then we can talk about it. I'm loving it. I love the container. I love how happy it is. I think that's, yeah. you know... That's what we were going for. Yeah, definitely. I'm gonna uh, go ahead and take that off. Yeah, definitely love the way it looks. Uh, I can't wait to do an update on this one. Uh, what do you guys think about this container? Um, I'm absolutely loving the color, the combination of the red, the purple there, and then this yellow with the orangey firecracker plant here. It's just, it just looks pretty amazing. I'm pretty excited to do it. I love that, that they brought us a big container. That, yes. And I think I said in the beginning of the video, but I love that because you, even though, you know, as one container that we're working with, we're able to fill it in with a lot of plants. Yep. Now, you don't have to do a lot of plants either. You, you know, to me, this is like a garden in a pot, you know, a Definitely. pollinator garden in a pot is going to invite a lot of pollinators. It has a lot of cheer, a lot of happiness. I think, you know, oh, yeah. it, it'll make anybody happy when they see it. And I think, you know, it's very happy for a child to to enjoy, you know, over summer. Um, it'll fill in. It's black. It's simple. I love that. It doesn't take a lot to just, you, yeah. you know, to um, um, to plant something very easy and simple. Um, that's why I went ahead and put on a, um, a potato vine. That, why, that, that, that way it spills over. And then you have all the other plants that will do a spilling too. And then they can mingle around, you know. I don't know. I, I love it. I can keep going. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> on this one, I really love it a lot. Yeah. This is the fun part about putting something together oh, yeah, and then so let's, seeing them, seeing their faces when they receive it. Yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, move this one out of the way, and we'll get started with our other container that we're gonna do. Okay. Okay, so we've already started playing with our next two containers. And the amazing part about this is that this is a second chance, I guess you would call it, because we did these last year for the same family and we absolutely loved the way those came out. Unfortunately, it was in a more shadier area where there was a tree and a porch overhanging. That's okay because we get to learn. And, and as we explore the neighborhood and work with other people here and there, we get to understand what we're working with. And now that we know what we're working with, we're excited because we think we picked out the perfect plants for this yes. container, huh? Yes, it made us think of plants that they just can't fail. Yeah. You know, whether they're in sun or they're in shade, they're yes. going to do amazing. So that's why we went with these. And I gotta say, I love using these, these yeah. um, what are they? Like a turquoise kind of color yeah. of containers. Yeah. I just love so much color. So yeah, we, had, we went ahead and um, Set. Let's go ahead and do this. Yeah, it's so going to be go ahead, fun again. I'm going to go ahead and move these plants and I'm going to put some of this uh, slow release in here. I'm going to do about four spoons in this one. Then Angie can do four spoons in hers. But like Angie was saying, uh, we're pretty excited about these containers because, again, I think we picked the perfect plants and they're going to yeah. work out for, we already know the, you know, the sun and, and how the plants are going to react there because the plants that we did use last year in these containers that did well was one, the coleus, right? It was a coleus. Um, we had a lantana in there and I think a uh, cleomi. A cleomi. And, and, and the lantana and cleomi need a lot of a sun. A lot more sun. So, so that was not the area for, you know, for, for um, that was not, they were not the plants for that area. Yeah. So this time around, we know exactly what type of lighting it is. Yes. So super happy. So the first plant we're gonna plant in here is a heart-to-heart -heart clowning around caladium. Now, this is a new caladium from Peru and Winters. 
Absolutely loving it. Beautiful. These have been in a container, so they're not exactly growing out completely yet, but as you can see, they're starting to put on a lot of growth. So we wanna get these planted as soon as possible. And one thing I wanna do here is if you didn't know, caladiums do flower. This is what the flower looks like. I'll show a little bit of a close it's up. It's flowery. But they do flower. So I'm gonna go ahead and prune this one off because we don't want the energy going to that flower there. So again, uh, Angie absolutely loved this and didn't you the climbing It has like a red um, coral kind of color. I just love it so much. It's just so pretty. Yep. I thought it would go perfect with the color of these pots. We actually have uh, bulbs planted in our garage that yes. we're waiting for them. To, well, they're already starting to come up, but we have about 10 of these that we're growing that we're going to be using in the garden here. So that's pretty yep. exciting. Which other plant do you want to go with you, next? You go with the next one. Mm, let's use the one that's going to go right next to it, which is coleus. So coleus does like... I think you want to tell them about the the lighting for the oh yes yeah. so caladiums. before before Angie continues with the uh, with the coleus now these caladiums um, a lot of these caladiums, caladiums from prune winters say that they do well in shade and they absolutely will do well in shade but some of the ones that are a little bit more redder in color are going to be able to take some sun and with our experience we've been able to grow some in the sun the ones that are complete completely red do extremely well in sun uh, but you want to keep an eye on them again and the fact that they're in containers is is absolutely wonderful because we can move those around if they're getting too much sun and we notice that they're not doing too well in the sun yes so next we're going to go ahead and use um, wicked witch coleus i love this coleus it just looks very elegant very pretty right yes and um it takes sun and it takes shade you know some you know the old varieties of coleus usually you didn't you, you couldn't put them in full sun but these varieties you know are very very um good varieties that will take a good amount of full sun so or shade too and they actually keep a very pretty color when they're in shade oh as they well. definitely do i that's love this coleus yeah, that's something that i love a lot that the color doesn't see it it'll change a little bit but not too much so especially if you're feeding them yeah Okay, so next. Next is the My one favorite. plant that will never leave our <clears throat> garden, I think. Um, and I know we said this is an annual container, but this is one plant that depending on what zone you're in, I know for us, it keeps coming back. So it's yeah. pretty wonderful to have a plant, an annual plant like this that comes back because it's a beautiful colored plant. I just love the color and I love the texture that this plant gives in yeah. any bed or container or wherever you plant this plant at. So again, you know, the coleus, I'm gonna go ahead and put it a little bit to the side front of the caladiums, just so it has enough, um, 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 what is it called, space to be able to spread in front of it a little bit and to the side. And then the caladiums will do their thing. They'll have enough room as well to spread over. Um, but I thought that the, the beautiful lime green ch um, chartreuse color will go back to this color of the, the coleus. Yes. It has a very pretty edge that is, um, also the same color. Oh yeah, like definitely. Green, lemon green, the birds. Yeah, they're <laughs> they fighting at the bird feeder here. Next plant, favorite color, right here. I don't know why, but it's a, it's a sun patient. But the good thing about sun patients is that they will actually do well in shade as well. Sun and shade. Yes. So, and they have beautiful leaves as well. But why is it my favorite? Not just because it'll do well in sun and shade, but because of the, the flower. That flower is very pretty. Um, it's a very pretty pink, the blush pink. Oh yeah. And I thought it, I don't know, I thought it would look very pretty with the, did the you caladiums. Say the yes, I did say it. It is um, compact blush compact pink, right? Compact blush pink. Okay. Did I say it all? No, no I didn't. <laughs> Sorry yeah. guys. Yeah, so it's compact blush pink. So I think it just goes yeah. back to the caladiums. So the one thing I'm absolutely loving about this container, it's a part sun to shade container, but the one thing I love about it is that it does have a lot of texture in it. Uh, you know, just the, the texture of the sun patient here, the texture of the lemon coral sedum, and then you have this, not really so much a texture, but just the color and the, the feel of this, along with the caladiums. I think it's just an absolutely There's a lot of container. color. There's a lot of color, whether it's for full sun, you know, or, or for shade area yeah. as well, which I love to always bring in color for um, shade areas. Some yes. people think that you can't have, um, um, that it's hard, that it's a challenge to have color yep. in, in shaded parts of your garden, but you really, there's really a lot of things, that, a lot yeah. of beautiful plants that work well in the shade as well. I forgot to mention the lemon coral sedum does amazing for shade as well. Yes, yes. Um, 
it doesn't get as I would say like thick. No. In no. the shade. Sometimes it does more of like a, I'm gonna say loose look. Yeah. But yeah, it, it still does. has that pop of color, that vibrant green, you yes. know, for that area if it's super shady. Oh yeah, definitely. So it, it, it's just beautiful. But how that area does get a little bit of sun, I'm pretty sure that it, it'll look really nice. Yeah, it's gonna, the it's, texture will hold. It's gonna be a great container. And I keep saying this, <clears> but uh, you know, just I'm excited to have these delivered and then be able to do the updates because it's always great to see something yeah. you plant um, especially when you have it documented on video like this and we see what they actually look like when we planted them and then we go back to do the updates and we're doing our watering and our fertilizing and then you see how big they've actually gotten. It's just an awesome sight to see. And then, you know, just a look on the, uh, the people's faces when they see how beautiful these containers look. So talking about watering, yes. um, watering, Okay, go ahead and talk about that first, and then we'll talk about the watering for how to water these containers. Well, Angie, we'll talk about the watering, but when we actually do the watering, what you want to do is we're actually going to probably water these with the fertilizer um, tonight or maybe tomorrow to get the initial fertilizer in there. But we actually use this uh, water-soluble plant food from Fruit Winners as well. It comes in a bag here. You just open it up, put it in here, and it has a spoon in there. And it gives you the directions on how much you actually have to use. I think it's like two spoons per, uh, per gallon, or I'm sorry, one spoon per gallon of water. And we'll basically use about a gallon per container when we fertilize these. And we want to do that at least once a week or every three days, every depending days. on how hot or how much you're actually watering because you don't want to lose any of those nutrients in the containers. Okay, so about the watering part, um, as here in our zone 7B, if it's, if it's not raining and it's summer, I water containers every single day. Yes. And I always recommend watering early in the morning. First thing, water them that way the plants don't get stressed you don't give it any time to completely dry out and for the plants to start feeling it and stress out because after a few times that the plant starts to stress out yeah. you can actually lose your plants so that is one of the big big things that i've always noticed um when people you know um, ask questions um, that something's going on with their plant and i'm yes. like are you watering and the watering is the big, big deal so Definitely. please water early in the morning will be great when it's super hot so that's it. Yeah. Um, first two containers for the growing season. Yes. Uh, so it's pretty exciting uh, because up next we get to do our containers and start getting stuff here in the garden completely. We have a few more that we're going to go ahead and put together yeah. for other families here on, on the military base. All right. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed these two combinations that we did for you guys here today. Before you close it up, um, we are going to um, go ahead and drop these containers, you know, to their to their homes, you know, to the families um, for sure. So yeah. you'll be able to see that going on, happening on, an on another oh, video. Definitely. And if, you know, later in the future, so you can see how they're growing, um, go ahead and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, um, Twitter as well, where, yes. you know, we go and when we water, do our waterings, we'll go ahead and put on some uh, some pictures so y'all can see what's really, you yeah. know, what's happening with the containers. And obviously, if you're not already subscribed to stay up to date with the videos on these updates and any more containers that we're doing, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give it a like if you like this video and we'll see you guys in the next video.